A really powerful aspect of Katia is to be able to create reusable templates that encapsulate your knowledge, your know-how, your intellectual property inside a component that can be reused across models and across projects. For the building and infrastructure applications, we encapsulate these templates in object types. These object types can be associated to building features and automatically instantiated to take your model from one low level of development to a higher level of development. In order to catalog and reuse these object types, we recommend creating libraries. These libraries then can be called and navigated when we're creating new building features or component specifications where we can easily find and relocate standardized components that we've developed for other projects that we've developed as standard products that we would like to reuse across all projects. In this case, we have a concrete wall that we're adding to our structural walls library. Moving building features from one 3D shape to another is an essential part of developing a project from design to construction. For this reason, we're releasing a new distribute function that will easily allow users to take 3D geometry, building objects and building features, whether it's a slab, a door, a wall, or a stair, and move it from one 3D shape to another. It's important to note here that moving it will also move with it all of the attributes and properties that have been associated to that building feature. In this case, we're going to take a couple of walls and we're going to distribute them to a work package so that the architect's design model can be reused in the construction phase by the general contractor. We launch the distribute command and then we set the destination where we want to insert these features. If the product doesn't exist, we'll create it on the fly. We also set what type of distribution technique or methodology we want to use. In this case, let's do a traceability and associativity as a parametric element, and we see the distribute command has automatically created a wall product with a 3D shape and three wall features inside a geometrical set from my design models. The quick distribute, when we moved levels from shape to shape, can also be used for walls, and it will give us the exact same result. So the associativity and traceability as a parametric feature is identical to what we saw with the quick distribute. If we do this again, traceability and associativity without the parametric element, you see that we get volumes as external references. And if we want to make those wall features, we can create a wall and we'll use a solid as an input. And we're basically recreating those walls. So now we have walls that are really related to the wall core external references. Now let's try the other two distribute types. Let's do just traceability, no associativity. For that, we're going to go to the other stair core and we're going to grab the first three walls and we'll distribute these to a new 3D shape. So we're going to create a work, a second work package. Work package two. We, uh, we need to set the destination type here from physical product to wall type. If we had selected all of these, we could do this once, but if not, we'll do it all three at a time. And instead of the associativity and traceability, we're just going to do traceability this time and see what that outputs, see what we get. In this case, we have just the wall geometry. We cannot edit this geometry. We cannot double click it and edit it. You'll recognize that the icon has been decorated with the little isolation icon. That means this wall has been isolated it's been distributed, it's non-editable, it has all of its properties, but it is not live. There's traceability, but no associativity. Now, if we try traceability as a parametric element, you see that we've created new walls. These walls are parametric, they can be edited, but they're linked to an isolated curve. You see, the one thing that we've lost here is the priority because it no longer understands the connection to a, uh, adjoining walls because the link to the adjoining walls is lost. It's the same type of action of behavior we get when we do a quick distribute and then deassociate or unassociate the wall from the original distributed object. So if you want to quick distribute and then de-link that wall, you get the same result as traceability without associativity as a parametric element. In conclusion, 
distribute is a very easy and powerful way to link building features from one 3D shape to another 3D shape while keeping all of the attributes and parameters associated to the original feature. We just created work packages for our concrete structural walls. And we did that so that we could prepare the construction site to build these walls in a dedicated work package outside of the architectural design model. Now, in order to do that, in order to create this construction model, let's go into our work packages and let's do an edit. Let's assign an object type to our walls. We're going to automatically create publications of these walls uh, after we've assigned the object type. The object type, as you remember, was inserted into the library so that it was easily accessible from our wall command. Now we're going to go to the product level and we're going to change level of development. We're going to instantiate the object type of that concrete wall that we just assigned to our distributed walls in our work package. Changing level of development will instantiate the engineering template that was embedded inside of our object type. Now those engineering templates were wall products and inside those wall products, we have a number of design sequences that were modeled using X generative design or the visual scripting uh, application in the visual script designer role. Those design sequences have a number of parameters that can be edited. Those parameters were favorited and pinned into our, into our favorites panel here and after we've instantiated that engineering template, we can go inside that 3D shape. It will automatically display our favorited pinned parameters, and we can execute those design sequences that were modeled in X Generative Design by clicking on a few parameters here. Activating those design sequences are going to trigger a number of actions and reactions inside of our 3D shape that's going to generate the rebar models of these different walls based on the rules that were defined by the construction company. So if I'm a general contractor, if I'm a subcontractor that's in charge of uh, creating all of the rebar cages for these walls, I can develop my own engineering template and object types that include all of my intellectual property, knowledge and know-how on how to generate that rebar insert them into an object type, and then I can directly consume the architect's design model, assigning my object type to that wall geometry and then generating, generatively, my fabrication model. This approach will save countless hours of rework and capitalize on previous experience gained on prior projects. This works from an IFC model as well. If I were to import an IFC model, I could consume that IFC wall geometry, assign my object type to it, and automatically generate all of my fabrication detail for the building from the IFC wall geometry. If you don't have an engineering template, but you have a UDF inside your object type, when you instantiate your UDF, when you assign your object type to your wall, component-based design and the wall feature will automatically instantiate the UDF and it will populate the wall feature with the parameters that are exposed in the UDF. Here you see the parameters that were published from the UDF, and here you see the parameters that are shown in the wall feature dialog box. They are the same. You can edit those features in the wall feature dialog box, or you can edit the, the parameters from the tree by double clicking on them and editing them straight from the tree. You saw with the concrete walls, we used the library to associate the object type to the wall feature. If you don't have a library, if you haven't set a library up yet, or if you have object types that haven't been included in any specific libraries, you can use the search functionality from the wall dialog box to search the database for object types that, may, that match the type of the feature that you are editing. So if you are making a wall feature and you search, it will filter the search results only to object types that are of type wall. Finally, if you, you see you want to change the parameter of the uh, UDF that's been instantiated by the object type, you can do that through the tree by double clicking on the parameter and editing directly from the tree. Or you can double click on any object that's attached to that wall feature. It will open up the wall dialog box and you have access to the parameters through the dialog box as if it were a normal wall feature.
This is an example of a UDF if my framing object type included an engineering template as well. After instantiating the UDF, I could go to the product level, change level of development, and instantiate the engineering template that is also associated to the object type. We didn't go through the exercise here, but these engineering templates also include drawings. Those drawings can be updated, extracted, and sent to the field directly for construction on site. In order to facilitate the tracking of distributed building features, there's a new distribute manager functionality. In order to use this, you select the source and a target destination, click apply, and it will show you all of the features that could be distributed and you can filter by all of the features that have been distributed. This is useful in order to check what feature has been distributed where and also to help manage the links and verify the status of distributed features. So if you select a feature and click on the link, you can then navigate down to see uh, where the link is and how that feature has been distributed and what is the status of that link. You can also use the distribution manager to manage distribution of features just as you would the normal distribution command. So in this case, let's distribute the slabs. Let's select the structure's source and say our structural detail model is going to be our destination. We see the slabs that have not been distributed yet. In this case, we want to create a new physical product for each of these slab features. And we want to give them a specific name. So let's set the name in the distribute features dialog box. Let's select all of them. We're gonna do this traceability and associativity as parametric features. Click OK and you'll see that Katia is going to automatically generate all of those physical products inside my detailed structural model as individual elements. I can open up this model and because these have been distributed parametrically, they're linked to the original distributed feature and all of the attributes have carried over to the new slab feature. The slab openings have not been distributed but the holes are all present in the slab geometry. And when I check their BIM attributes, you can see that the slab base quantities have been automatically computed. Again, distribution is a powerful tool to transfer geometry from one 3D shape to another to help develop a scalable and collaborative building model from design for construction, managing links, and taking the same model through all phases of a construction project.